All right, since it is end game day, I just had to make this happen. I was lucky enough to get on over there and see Captain Marvel right before end game. It starts here in like two hours. I'm going to take my kids out swimming and then I'm going straight to end game. I'm so, so excited. I did get to complete the 21 previous films before this right under the wire thanks to the uh, mother of my children, Jennifer, for watching the kids while I went and caught a screening of Captain Marvel right before this. Honestly, I thought it was going to be packed because I thought people were going to be brushing up or something, you know. I think everyone's a lunatic like me, but it was just me and like four other people. So um, I'm going to go off memory here. I don't have any notes. Um, I'll try to do some quick spoiler thoughts on this. This isn't going to be some in-depth thing like usual because it's honestly just as, as much as I can remember. I'm expecting to be interrupted by my daughters at any point because I'm trying to sneak this review in really quick. Um, but I wanted to get it in before I saw Endgame. Um, so yeah, uh, Captain Marvel is a character I'm not familiar with like at all. Uh, before I saw this movie the first time. Um, I have not read a single Captain Marvel comic, so I know really nothing about Carol Danvers. And so when I went into this the first time, and you know, obviously this time I, rem I know the movie, but I don't know anything else about her. Um, it was really just me learning about her. And now this is a pretty, you know, basic um, origins flick. Um, you know, maybe whetting your appetite for an end game. It's just this, it's introducing a character that we know has to come in and be um, competition or somebody who can take out Thanos. And so, I, they definitely sell her as extremely powerful. Like, you know, not, not more powerful than anything we've ever seen yet. Like, I feel like Thor is still the most powerful being we've seen in these films. Um, but still very powerful. I mean, she takes down Ronin's ships like nothing. So once she's kind of taken off the chip and throws it go away and, and, you know, kicks everyone's ass and is flying through space, you definitely feel that this chick can rumble. And, and you know, she doesn't even really fully understand her powers yet at this point. Like, she just realized that those are hers, and now she has full and limited potential with them, and this is, like, her first effort using them. So, um, you know, once she gets in tune with them and can really use them, then, yes, yeah, she's going to be the force to be reckoned with. So, And plus, you don't want to blow your whole load on this movie showing every single thing she can do and how powerful she can be. It's just kind of a little taster. And I like that. So... This is more of like a buddy cop movie in a way. You know, Samuel Jackson or Nick Fury's character here, uh, de-aging on him and uh, and Clark Gregg. That's Gregg, yeah. Uh, character here, they is in phenomenal, especially Samuel Jackson's. You can't even tell. I mean, I grew up in the '90s. I know what he looked like back then, and wow just stunning i mean and the fact that it's so much usually in these movies we only get really small quips like kurt russell's and robert downey jr's and michael douglas not michael keaton thank you to uh, the person who corrected me on my ant-man and the wasp i had just watched spider-man homecoming names were mixed mixing up um which i think isn't it true am i am i remembering this right that like michael keaton's name was actually Michael Douglas and he had to change it because there was already one? Or was that him or was that somebody else? Am I fucking remembering that correctly? I'm not saying that's why I messed it up. It isn't, but it, I, if it, that's true, that's hilarious that I messed that up. I'm gonna have to Google that right after this, but I'm gonna have to look into that. I think that's the, I think those are the two people because somebody had to change their name because there was already that name on the, on the uh, um, Actors Guild or whatever. All right, so... Um, we get we get this whole Kree versus Scroll war going on in the opening here, and Carol has these powers that have been given to her by this little chip in her neck, and she can't remember anything be uh, before the six years she came came there, and they're trying to wipe out the scrolls. The scrolls are terrorists, and they're trying to um, take out the planet, and so. Um, 
they go and they're hunting these people down and Carol is lands on Earth uh, during the 90s, you know, my era. That's, that's when I was in high school. This is like 1995. I mean, that was in eighth grade. This is a Earth that I know very well. Um, so they... They did a very, I mean, they just kind of threw in all the obvious things like the songs and Radio Shack and Blockbuster and stuff like that. It, it's it's pretty obvious. I don't feel like it's overly heavy handed, though. I know some people were complaining like, oh, my God, like enough nostalgia of the 90s. I don't really feel like that all that much. Yes, there's a decent amount, but it's not like shoved down your fucking throat. Um, my favorite use of the 90s in this probably just because of how it plays to the scene and because I like the song and all that is no doubts I'm just a girl. I really like the way that scene plays out and I really like the build up to it about her getting knocked down, getting knocked down, getting knocked down, all these past events that have happened out throughout her life and you know they kind of sh- we see that ver- we see that part of it her getting knocked down constantly told you're not strong enough you should sit on the sidelines this and that and i know people will see that as some uh social justice warrior agenda that, that we're trying to make women equal like okay that's fine like hey, that is the message it's fine it, what's wrong with that i don't understand what the we have some very insecure people on this planet so um but I love that. I love how she just rises up from every one of those, every incident. Over Carol Danvers has always risen to the occasion way before she was, uh, you know, given these powers. So she was a powerful uh, being well before she was given powers. And I just love that. I love when she gets up and she like, you know, rises up against it, and breaks out, gets the full use of her powers, kills out there, just. Just a girl comes on, she's kicking everyone's ass. It is beautiful. I love that scene very, very much. I have to wonder if um, little, what does she call her in this? Like, not, uh, it's not Captain, but it's like Lieutenant Danger or the little girl. The little girl, her best friend's daughter. I can't remember what her name is. Um, I have to imagine we're going to see her or we're going to find out she died in the incident. Because when she comes back to Earth, when Carol returns back to Earth at the end of this movie, when we see her in post-Endgame, um, or post-Infinity War and inside Endgame, um, we we see she shows up and it's like, you know, she's going to want to contact someone she knows. Fury's dead. Um so it's either her, her best friend or her best friend's daughter, which her best friend's daughter now, this is 95, it's like almost 30 years ago. This is, or not 30, uh, 20, sorry. Man, my math is good. 25-ish um, years ago. She's going to be in her mid-30s. I mean, she's going to be about my age. So, yeah, I, I, I will be very curious on if she plays a role in Endgame. I look forward to seeing her. Um, the whole reveal of the cat scratch being what took Fury's eye out. Um, it's funny because, yeah, he says, I, last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. And it's he does say in the movie, I was trying to pay attention. This time, now that I know it was the cat, he does say, I'm going to trust you. So he it, it does play into how uh, he does lose his eye. I had also said that he had a scratch across his actual eyeball when they show it in uh, maybe Winter Soldier or whichever one it was. Um, we, I, it doesn't seem that way in this, but we never do actually see his eyeball. But he claims that he's okay and it's just a cat scratch. If you had your actual eyeball clawed straight across, there would be such pain and, and you know, he would be blinded in it and everything. So I don't know. That seemed a tad inconsistent, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Very cool seeing Ronan in here. Um, Ronan feels different. I know he is without the the makeup and all of that, and maybe he's just not as tough as he was. This was 25 years ago, um, comparatively, or 20 years ago, comparatively to Guardians of the Galaxy. I want to say, um, but yeah, he, I don't know. He seems wimpier, but as I said, maybe that just that works. Um, Jude Law's character in this is, is fine stock villain. I mean, he's the he's the villain of the movie. The AI intelligence is the leader of their people, and they never actually get to see their true form. 
uh, kind of reminded me of something like contact or dad comes out or something um, yeah I mean as I said I don't really know anything about the story so I don't really know how that all plays out um, there's some cool fight sequences um, it's cool to see connective tissue here and there. You get to see how the Avengers name was was thought of. You know, it's Carol Avenger Danvers. Um, so they, they definitely fill in a lot of little blanks. Maybe some that you didn't really need to be filled in, but you have them here. It's, it's good. It's good. It's not fantastic. It would probably be somewhere around the bottom of, of the MCU for me. Um, now have seen it twice. It's good though. I dig it. I mean, there's no bad MCU film in my opinion. Um, it's just I wasn't overjoyed with it. But you know, like Thor, like um, you know, most of the MCU's solo origins movies, they're just kind of outside of like Iron Man. They're just kind of like first time watches for sure. They're just kind of like here's the character get to know him here's a little bit as far as like brie larson goes i know that that's like a hot topic for certain people and they love to hate her and they think that she's just a bitch and this and that and there's so much of that i'm not going to speak to that i don't give a fuck to be completely honest i i don't know what is speculative i don't know what is real i don't i don't care to be honest it just doesn't matter to me um in this movie that's what i'll judge her off of i mean she's a very attractive woman and she's a great actress. I mean, I've seen her in a few things. She's always brings a great, and, and I think they mismarketed her in the trailer um, because she does have a lot of personality in this. There's a lot of light moments. There's the way she plays off of Samuel Jackson and whatnot is great. She, she, does have, um, she does have a fun vibe to her in this movie. She's not all super serious uh, resting bitch face or whatever like I saw. Um, so, I do wish I, we would have saw a little levity in the trailers just so that people wouldn't have grabbed that. But fuck people. If they're going to judge a movie off of a trailer and their character alone without actually watching the entire film to pass that full judgment. And I don't know. I, I All right. Anyway. Um, what else? Uh, the whole idea that the scrolls were actually the, the victims here, that they were being labeled as terrorists and... Um, ben Mendelssohn's character here coming in. I like that. I like the way that they teamed up. I really did like the scrolls uh, when they find them on the ship and she shows them the pin, you know, the little kid comes over and shows them the pinball machine. And Fury's like, if I've been on this ship for six years, I'd have a high score too. It was a really funny moment. Um, probably my favorite moment for some reason, and I laughed really hard the first time. I didn't laugh as hard the second time. I actually just kind of got a chuckle, but the first time is when she's feet, when she's uh, fighting some of the scrolls on the ship when she has her hands in those, um, you know, traps, whatever the hell they are, the things that held her in that machine. Um, and one of the one of the scrolls like growls at her or yells or whatever, and she like growls back. I don't know why that that won me over in the moment on her personality. I was like, oh, she's going to be fun. It's not going to be all serious business. And she was making jokes before that with Jude Law and whatnot. But it was in that moment that I was like, oh, she's having fun with this. She's not Miss Serious Bitch, whatever. And the rest of the movie, she's joking around. She's having a good time. I mean, she needs to be serious when she's serious. She's emotional when she needs to be emotional. I also really liked her friend, the, uh, the, the best friend that became her co-pilot i thought she was um a solid actress when she needed to bring her dramatic role uh she brought it and i think that that's probably why they casted her is because she could bring such an emotional uh, moment and make it make it feel real so the acting from her was great and I, I just dug her character in the way you know the chemistry there they didn't really get to fully bond again after not uh, her not really remembering her i really liked the kid um, so there's no real character I dislike. I, I dug them all, and uh, overall, yeah, it's just it's it's a good introduction to the character. It's what it's it's what it needed to be. It was like here's a cool here's a new character to get used to. We're gonna insert her in Endgame, and hopefully she's fucking badass and even more utilized there than she uh, was in this because this is this is the taste test and end game I feel like is where she's going to truly shine and I mean that both figuratively and literally since she is a beacon when she when she gets I love the look of her when they when they get the mohawk I'm so I'm so glad they kept that stuff that's what Marvel the MCU 
does so well is they play with they 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 accept that they're comic book sh shows and they don't try to go too serious and they also don't try to go too goofy there's that perfect balance and they just strike it they 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 embrace the silliness of the comics sometimes and they go for outfits that we want to see that's why i'm so excited about them handling fantastic four and x-men and x-men oh my god because i guarantee you that when the mcu is in charge of the x-men we will see wolverine in his yellow and black costume like we've always wanted to see and not just hints at it and jokes about it like they did in the Fox brand franchise of the X-Men films. Now, I'm not shitting on those movies. It's just, I don't know. I would have liked to seen that, and we're going to see it, and you can bet your ass the MCU will give it to us because they know how to embrace what the fans want, and they also know how to play it to their strengths as opposed to their weaknesses. A lot of people try to go in that comedic route and that, in that comic booky way, and they blow it, and they make it too fucking goofy. That is why Kevin Feige and these guys balance things so well. The way they do costumes, the way that they do characters, so good. I'm ready for Endgame. Let's fucking do this shit. I am beyond, beyond ready. Um, so that's that. I did it. I got to see Captain Marvel. I don't know. I'm sure there's other things that I would have loved to have talked about, but I didn't write them down. I got to go. So there, I got it in. Awesome. I'll see you tonight with some endgame review. Spoiler free, I promise. Adios.